One question is designed to give subscribers valuable insights on how executive leaders in college athletics think about key issues on their respective campuses, in their departments, or within their leagues and conferences. Greetings, this is Ty Brown and welcome to One Question, where we highlight executive leaders in college athletics. Our guest today is Tom Berman. Tom is the Director of Athletics at University of Wyoming. Greetings, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Now, Tom, you've been in your position since 2006, and of course, you've been in college athletics somewhere around 24, 25 years, so you're well experienced at leadership, at at working, and being around different leaders. Um, of course, Wyoming is your alma mater, so being there is probably something that you see as a source of pride in terms of where your career has led you to, right? Absolutely, yeah. It, uh, going to school, undergraduate here was uh, a, a, a important experience for my life and my development, and then the opportunity to come back and be the AD and, and I guess, in theoretically give back a little bit. But uh, it's been a great experience, and I've, I've loved my time at the University of Wyoming. Excellent. I want to talk to you a little bit about just creating a culture for success, right, in athletics and really on campus. A couple of friends of mine have told me, friends in the the industry, that, you know, you have a pretty good culture there for success and people like being there and want to be there. Can you tell me about some of your methods for creating and maintaining operational success there at University of Wyoming? Well, first of all, I think you've got to make... um College athletics is a hard business. You got to recognize that going in. The the commitments, the time commitments are immense. Um, the pressures are unique. You know, you look at coaching pressures that they experience. But I mean, in general, all all staff and administrators in college athletics, I think, feel probably more pressure than the general public. So you got to recognize those challenges. And then I think the key to making it uh, creating a positive culture is to make it a great place to work so have empathy be a be a leader that has an open door policy be available um, have some um, some understanding of the challenges coaches assistant coaches staff members go through but also you know hold people accountable um, and and, uh, make sure they're achieving at their their peak um, and uh, trying to create that atmosphere where, yeah, we love you, but we need you to we need you to produce. And uh, I think I think we're pretty good at that. We build a real family atmosphere here at Wyoming. We want you to bring your kids around. We want you to have a have an experience that's maybe different than you can get at some of the some of the other schools in the country. Now, as an AD, understanding the ups and downs and the challenges that coaches specifically go through. How do you embody that? Like, how do you relay that in your actions as the leader of the department? Well, first of all, I'm not too emotional. I'm pretty steady. But that's my personality. So that part of it is fairly easy. I don't get too up and I don't get too down. I say it frequently that it's never as good as it seems and it's never as bad as it seems. So take a breath and step back and figure out how to improve or figure out where you are. But, I mean, just for example, we uh, we had a rough start to our volleyball season just the other night and got beat by an opponent that we never thought we would get beat by in an exhibition match in front of a very good crowd at home. So Monday morning, the first thing I'm going to do is is seek out volleyball coaches or early in the week and 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 make sure they're doing okay hey it's it's one match we got oh, it's a, it's a marathon not a sprint and just say the right things i think if you lose your temper and stomp around on the sidelines or you you look upset i think that just adds fuel to the fire i mean they know what they're there to do they understand their job description and they know when they lose matches they should win or football games they should win that n- people aren't happy but that doesn't mean you treat them differently yeah i agree with that you know i once heard i i once was talking to an administrator this was a few years ago and he was talking about the co- the football program at the university he was at. He he was probably the deputy or number two or three there. And he said, "Yeah, we should, you know, our coach should be able to give us seven or eight wins this year." And and me, my background is working with football coaches. To me, that's kind of problematic for, you know, somebody to put that kind of pressure like these eight games you should definitely win. Is how is is that a dynamic that you talk about with the coach? Are there? That that interests me when he said that, and I've never followed up with with that type of thing. But it was just interesting that the uh, you know that that administrator had those expectations for that coach 
even this was in the summer before this even yeah. even. I personally don't go through the schedule and say, hey, you should finish 8-4 and four, or basketball, you should finish 20-11 and 11, or anything of that nature. I um, And I think, and I publicly never talk about, you know, I, every year ADs go, what are the expectations for this coach? And when coaches are struggling, they may say, what is the expectation for this coach to keep their job? Um, I'm never going to put a number on it. Because I think coaches can do an excellent job some years and maybe maybe only win you know half their games. It depends on injuries. It depends on schedule. It depends on a lot of things. And if you're if you're if you're building, you're playing with young kids and you finish 500, but you win three of your last four. That's a different dynamic than if you're a veteran team. You went 500 and you lost three of your last four and you got beat at home by your rival. I mean, those everything changes depending on the situation, the scenario. So I never in public come up with numbers. I never would sit down with a coach and say, you need to win X. They're going to know what success is um, because I'm going to define it as we go through the season when we meet. Try to meet as often as I can with our head coaches, especially in our, in our, in a couple of our sports because it's, you know, we got to be on the same page. We say it all the time here at Wyoming and, um, you know, the football coach, the women's basketball coach, the uh, men's basketball coach, we got to be lockstep together and really know where the other one is coming from and what, what where we all stand on important topics and issues. And we meet frequently. We Sometimes it's informal, sometimes it's formal, but we, we spend a lot of time together. Right. Now, a few years ago, you, you had the opportunity to bring on a coach who was well-respected in the profession to your football program, that's Craig Bowl. I know Craig a little, not, not very familiar, but a little from my time with the American Football Coaches Association as he was on the board of directors. And he always came across to me as very even keeled, which seems like it matches your personality, and knew, probably defined success for everybody around him, and was very organized at his, his approach to things. I wonder ha, what has he brought to your university, especially after you look at it two or three years down the line. Yeah, Craig has bought has brought a level of professionalism and commitment, dedication to our football program that's been fantastic. He has really done a great job. You were spot on when you said professional, organized. He's going to he's gonna be prepared. He is a great, and I don't mean he's not a good, he is a great communicator. So he's very thoughtful in how he presents his story. He's very thoughtful in how he prevents his tact, especially when he's in front of his team. Um, he doesn't wing much when it comes to that. He knows that he's only got so many times, so many times in a day or in a year or in a week when he can address them and really get their attention. So he's very thoughtful and uh, diligent in how he how he reaches them. Um, does the same thing. We went through a massive fundraising project, um, raised. You know, in, in reality, build a $45 million facility that was for all student athletes, but has a real strong focus on football player development. And he was intimately involved in the vision planning, intimately involved in the solicitation, um, and just has a great sense of how to tell a story. Um, so I would say, you know, that's he's brought a, a level of professionalism that um, we're thrilled to have him here at the University of Wyoming. Right. And, and when you talk about hiring coaches, I always wonder, and I've never been an athletic director or anywhere near an athletic director, right? But you can take away as much risk as possible. You know, sometimes in the end it comes down to luck. Or are they going to fit even if they've been successful in the past? I've noticed that a lot of the coaches you've hired, some of them have been on national championship staffs, won national championships. Does it do you feel relieved after two or three years that I made the right decision and this is working? Like, how does an AD feel in that position? Yeah, yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. You know, you you can kind of tell after year three kind of the, the trend and where things are going, and and you you feel good about the hire you made, or you may say, you know, I might have missed. And and uh, ADs that think they have some some incredible skill set to never make a mistake. Well, generally those ADs are at jobs where 
all the great coaches in the country want to work. So picking you're picking from the best. That's a little different than when you're at a place like the University of Wyoming, where you got to a you got to go recruit a candidate, and and oftentimes you're going to hire an unproven candidate. Uh, much more difficult. But you know fairly fairly early now. I will say this, I have had coaches that started off a little slow and then finished really strong, and and sometimes it just takes them longer to kind of either build their staff or build their recruiting base or whatever, but... um, you know, you, you you still have a pretty good plan and uh, understanding of how they're doing probably two, three years in, without a doubt. And then your basketball coach, the cur- your current coach, uh, Coach Edwards, I believe. Now, Yep, Coach Allen Edwards. Yeah, and you had a unique situation uh, was a couple of years ago where the coach that was in, um, I don't know if he was Larry getting... Larry Shiat was our head coach. Yeah. And Larry... Uh, had done a great job. We won a Mountain West Conference Championship into the NCAA tournament. Um, he, he, I think he just tired of the time demands of college being a head coach at Division One level and had an opportunity to go to the NBA and worked on the Dallas Mavericks staff and and uh, jumped at it. And so we were searching. We had a really good culture and we had been successful so we hired from within and hired Alan Edwards and um, you know in all transparency he started off well and last year was a down year and uh, um, I have absolute confidence he'll get it turned around but um, you know we can't have seasons like we had last year in, in cowboy basketball. You mentioned that there's ups and downs and challenges but that process of hiring you interviewed some of the assistants on Coach Shide's staff before he left. And that is a very unique process. And communication must be very clear with the head coach if you're going to interview his assistant coach for for a job that he's still in, right? Yeah, we knew. The good thing about Coach Shia and I, we were very good friends. And so when he made a decision to step away, I had said to him, my goal is to stay within the program. And I'm going to interview all three of your full-time guys. And if at the end of that I, I, I choose to hire one, great. If not, then I'll do a, a, a more broad-based search. Um, uh, but he was he was aware of it, and he provided some input on each candidate, pros and cons, and was very supportive of that process. And and the good news for us is during that transition, we had we had very little turnover of coach or of players, which in today's world, especially Division One basketball, you know, if you upset the apple cart slightly, you're going to have five or six guys walk on you, and we didn't want that. Um, because we've done a very good job academically in kind of fixing an APR issue that we had had a while back. And so we didn't want to start that all over. Excellent. I, I ask one more question here, kind of along the lines of what you've touched on here with, with Coach Edwards. Obviously, he had a, he had a down year, but then um, other coaches on staff, some of them first-time head coaches but had been on uh, national championship staffs. Do they come to you about leadership and topics that – outside of X's and O's, since you've been in a, in a leadership position for a while, do they lean on you for those type of things? Or? Some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, I think part of it is uh, uh, relationships and comfort level. You know, I, uh, um, I, our women's basketball coach who just retired, Joe Ligurski, him and I would talk frequently about, hey, how do I deal with this? What are you thinking? I'd give him some input. Coach Bull and I do the same thing. Coach Shiat and I did a lot of that. Coach Edwards now and I do quite a bit of that. Um, so it, it depends on the coaching staff and, and uh, the head coach and the relationship, but they know, I mean, uh, the good news for me is there's not a coach on this staff, whether it's the, the golf coaches or the tennis coach, they know my door is open. I'm available to them all the time and they are, they take advantage of it. Well, Tom, this has been an excellent conversation. It's pretty insightful on how you've tried to create and maintain that culture there at University of Wyoming. I appreciate you joining us on one question. Super, Ty. I appreciate what you do for the industry. That was Tom Berman. He is the Director of Athletics at University of Wyoming. And, of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of One Question is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.